वेलकम टू डी आर टी एस पी आर शो दिस इज डॉक्टर तंगेल्ला शिव प्रसाद रेड्डी आलिया डॉक्टर टी एस पी आर नमस्ते आदाब हलो एंड वाम वाम वेलकम टू रविचंद्रन स्वामीनाथन जी ईज आलो ईज आलो गुरु स्वामी फॉर मी इन डाटा एंड डिसमेटिंग इनफर्मेशन पीपल ट्राई टू यू नो स्क्रीम एट मी शाउट एट मी बट अल्टीमेटली देल बिकॉज ट्रूथ हेज टू प्रिवेल इफ डेमोक्रेसी हेज टू सर्वाइव इफ फंडामेंटल राइट है should not be infringed so that you have that freedom and freedom that is why ravichandran swaminathan ji for dr tsp channels not just for telangana and tamil nadu for entire india and for those countries the world who vouch on democracy with absolute freedom practicing democracy with absolute freedom for its citizens that is very fundamental and very very important otherwise it's of no use last time we have clearly stated digital emergency democracy dying incrementally so now this topic also the telecom bill let me hear his from his own words because he has very well articulately described the incident of 26th uh, june when parliament was going go go on the democracy which happened in i mean emergency which happened in 1977 but on the same day what happened what is going to happen to india in the form of this telecom bill no one discusses not even opposition this is the this is what has been ah, yes. avichandran ji's uh, main grouse what the hell this opposition parties are doing first let me hear from his mouth then i'll show you one photograph and video sir please no i don't want to <laughs> um actually we are in the process of dismantling de democracy brick by brick we are dismantling it brick by brick we are dismantling democracy in this country uh, i don't know if you have read about ergels uh, in it and the quote from there is the descent to hell is very easy <laughs> Benjamin Franklin had also remarked that those who give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither the liberty nor safety nor the freedom. Freedom, wonderful is it? <laughs> Descent to hell, that is wonderful. Now, uh, so twenty six June, when the Lok Sabha Speaker got up and started condemning emergency. and passed a resolution condemning emergency was happy because i had opposed i was 18 years 17 18 years then and i was opposing emergency uh and on 26 june if you remember uh, if i uh, if i want to re recollect the proclamation for emergency was issued by mrs indira gandhi with the words that this emergency is been declared in the public interest for the securing the integrity and sovereignty of the country yeah. and you you will be surprised this particular article 352 under which emergency was declared was taken by our constitution uh, framers dr ambedkar and everybody from the german uh, constitution hitler okay hitler mm. so like i said the road to hell is paved with always good intentions <laughs> so on 26 january uh. the bjp the nda government and uh, everybody they were all marking 50th year of emergency they stood in homage in silence to the lives lost and suspension of fundamental rights everything it was nice in the afternoon the government came out with a statement saying that they are going to implement telecom uh, uh, partially and uh, what what are the uh, uh, sections when they said partial uh, this thing 
uh, what are the sections that they had given? Section 1, 2, uh, section uh, 10, uh, uh, 20 to 30, 10 to 30, section 44, and etc. So many sections were given. In all these, in all these, uh, uh, the, the thing was, this covers the right of way for telecommunications. That is the first one. The right of way for telecommunication networks on public and private property. The power to notify standards. Powers of the government to take temporary possession of any telecommunication network service. Prioritize routing of messages from users. Authorized for response and recovery during public emergency. Remember this. Now, please note down this, Dr. Reddy, because it affects you also. <laughs> Block, intercept, detain, or enable the disclosure of any encrypted or messages in a form which can be read by the government and it is, can be from any person or persons on any subject received for transmission by a telecommunication service or network. Wonderful. Then it gives a power to the government to intercept or detain any press messages, press messages of correspondence accredited to the central or <laughs> state government intended to be published in India. Suspend any operation of any telecommunication network or service on what grounds? Any public emergency. Now, there is no definition of what is public emergency. In the interest of public safety, it is to protect the sovereignty and integrity of India, defense and security of the state, friendly relations with any foreign countries, public order, preventing incitement of commission of any offense. These are the conditions, A to G. Then, it empowers the government in the interest of national security to set standards suspend, remove or prohibit the use of specified equipment or services from countries or persons notified. So if the government doesn't like a person or if the person doesn't, if Dr. Reddy, you don't agree with the government, then the government can notify you and suspend your services. Hmm. Individually. So, now, there are uh, so many sections of, of uh, others also, 60, 61, etc. It is setting up a Bharat Nidhi, Bharat uh, Digital Nidhi for uh, research and development. I don't know what they're going to do, research and development, but still, some research and development, a sandbox to create sandboxes for uh, testing of uh, this thing. So, so many things that they have specified. But primary concern is this is a uh, telecom uh, act is to replace the Indian Post and Telegraphs Act and the Wireless Act. The powers that the government has given itself far exceeds what was given in the Indian Postal Act and the Wireless uh, Telegraph Act. In the Indian Postal Act and the Wireless Telegraph Act, only the Home Secretary was authorized for interception or uh, uh, delaying a message or opening a message. Here, the government has empowered itself and it says that it will authorize anybody. It need not be the Home Secretary. It can authorize anybody for what? To block it is not just intercept. It is to block, detain, and disclose. All the three. Because these three things were not available in the Indian Postal Act and the Wireless Act. 
can you can you again repeat them sir once again the government has empowered itself to block to intercept to detain or enable the disclosure of any encrypted message which means your whatsapp messages can be decrypted twitter uh, telegram can be decrypted proton mails can be intercepted mm -hmm. anything that you send on your from your mobile phone or a computer resource or uh, even your mail even your regular postal this thing that can be blocked intercepted detained or disclosed that means there is nothing there is nothing private anymore and on what conditions it, earlier the condition was only in the situation of a war hmm. or a very emergent armed rebellion that was the word used in the original one Hmm. armed rebellion now it is nothing like that it is even for dissent for example uh, in the case of uh, uh, just to give you two two three examples delhi riots happened against the ca and nrc now government had the power to suspend any telecommunication network and in that area or the entire country and intercept mails left right and center on anybody suspected of Uh, uh inducing those people incitement of offenses that is the word that they are using so if dr reddy in your channel you talk of against vaccines then the government say say that you are trying to incite the uh, rebellion you are trying to incite the people therefore your channel can be blocked intercepted your mails can be intercepted on that uh, this thing on that score your uh, phones can be tapped they are already being done, doing <laughs> since so, so many that they are doing it uh, now that they are doing it in a different way but now they have made it legal uh, what they were doing all these years so the government has now armed itself with powers ex in excess <clears throat> of what they were enjoying under the indian postal act and the indian wireless act more important the press can be muscled now press freedom is not absolute the press should realize that press freedom is not absolute like i said it is to protect the public interest and integrity and sovereignty they can do anything <clears throat> here i'll just play this video wherein they were discussing so i want even rahul gandhi to understand now what is there so what you have to say i yes level sir 97% right entry session of dubious history 146 mps have been suspended throughout this winter session the question is not how efficiently the house is run the question is how much of india's voice is being allowed to be heard in this session? so the idea that you can run the house efficiently by silencing the voice of the opposition is a non democratic idea this election has shown that the people of india expect the opposition to defend the constitution the samvidhan of this country rahul gandhi ji what is samvidhan what is happening on the same 26th day of june when the parliament stands in silence against 1977 emergency how is that the parliament has forgotten that a telecom bill is going to be implemented or will come into force existence on the same day where is the voice of the nation heard how could you save constitution mr rahul gandhi and all india alliance and also all those majority community who have been voting for bjp very blindly what will you do tomorrow even your phones can be heard if you say even a word against even if you don't like something if you utter a word they are going to pounce upon you and where is the press freedom where are the press giants the com press community leaders where are you why are you not opening your mouth didn't you understand what was happening on one side black day silence all that fine condemning 1977 it destroyed democracy <laughs> fundamental rights infringed sovereignty of the country 
or public interest was the one on which Indira Gandhi proclaimed emer emergency in 1977. Then what is that you have been doing, Mr. Modi? And all those supporters, Chandra Babu Naidu, he is again claims himself to the topmost politician. Doesn't he understand? And Nitish Kumarji, no morality even after rail accidents. He is not even questioning. These are the parties now here. They are supporting Modi. And how Mr. Modi government has been indulging this while claiming 1977 emergency unconstitutional, but the same Modi government is indulging in unconstitutional methods, declaring emergency on the country, in the country, uh -huh. on the freedom of people speech. So I just want to play once again, sir. <laughs> Satravi Lok Sabha, Uski productivity, Pachi Sanke, highest level for 96. Even Om Birla speaker is laughing when Modi is trying to claim 90% of this thing. So that is the fate of BJP now. 10% rate. Session of dubious history, 146 MPs have been suspended throughout this winter session. The question is not how efficiently the house is run. The question is how much of India's voice is being allowed to be heard in this. Yeah. So the idea that you can run the house efficiently by silencing the voice of the opposition is a non-democratic idea. This election has shown that the people of India expect the opposition to defend the constitution, the Samvidhan of this country. Rahul Gandhi, already the voice has, nation's voice has been suppressed by this bill. Are you aware? Where are your advisors, Mr. Rahul Gandhi and all the other political parties? Once again, I am showing you this. No privacy. Indian government can take control of any telecommunication network. Under new act, they can listen your calls, text and SMS if it poses danger to law and order. What is law and danger? If I criticize Modi, that is danger. That means freedom infringed. You don't need to criticize any policy under the ambit of 191A, under the ambit of 191A only, press is recognized. The rights of press, freedom of press has happened, it's happening. Now that is being curbed. Where are our, the great stalwarts of press freedom and opposition leaders and BJP MPs, tomorrow even you will be enslaved. Is this not insecurity of Mr. Modi government? Instead of what he promised, uniform civil code, population control bill, Muslim reservations, he said he will remove. Still temples under Endowment Act. Instead of acting on that, fearing that the entire Hindu community, majority community may question Mr. Modi, they are indulging in these such type of nonsensical things, which is very unconstitutional. And equally, I blame Indian Alliance represented by now. Rahul Gandhi is the opposition leader. Without even understanding what is happening, what is in store in respect to, to the bills. And the other day also we have dis dis discussed how digital democracy is already, emergency is already prevailing. What is happening to the digital aspect? He is not having no idea. That is why Modi along with Chandra Babu Naidu and Natish Kumar, their alliance, is trying to suppress the voice of India, which is very unconstitutional and we condemn it. Yes, sir. Now you go ahead. See, just... in, in the uh, slide that you have put, in that slide, please put that slide. Ah, okay, okay. Let's put it again. In that slide that you have put, there is a small line which says that journalists are exempted from surveillance. That is not true. That is not true. Yeah, that's, that's why you just clearly, here, see how the, they are even managing it, sir. Very neatly pointed out. See how these media houses, in emergency, New rule by government for telecoms. I am the one who had gone to high court on telephone tapping Mr. Modi. That is how your own general secretary was saved, that Karnataka man, when KCR was pouncing on him. Knowing very well all these things, you are diluting this act. In whose interest? That means you are fearing. That means already undeclared emergency or you are going to again impose that emergency, which no one can understand, you feel, but entire India and world understands now. In emergencies or when national security is at risk, the government can intercept telecom services to block and control messages and call transmissions. However, there are exceptions for journalists. Messages sent by accredited journalists for news purposes are exempt from surveillance. How Sorry, is sir. this? They are not exempt. They are not exempt because these... Next line says, 
If that is, I have pointed out about eight or nine uh, conditions. Yes. Incitement to law and order, incitement to uh, do a criminal offense, yeah, public order. Uh, eight, eight, uh, seven or eight, uh, these things I prescribed. Under those conditions, even journalist messages sent by accredited correspondents can be blocked, intercepted, detained. Now, now it is a poison by this media which is spreading canards without understanding. And not only that, I earnestly appeal to Chandrachud Chief Justice, Supreme Court and all Chief Justices of High Courts how Mr. Modi's government, supported by Chandra Babu Naidu TDP and Briti, uh, JDU Nitish Kumar, trying to usurp the rights of the courts without any trial, they can now straight away authorize someone and they can block everything. Is this not unconstitutional? Then why should we have courts? That is what they were trying to do with those three criminal laws which, are, which we are going to come out with. Am I right or wrong, uh, Ravichandranji? You are right, because there also there have been a lot of lacuna, but we will talk about it in the next, uh, this thing. Yeah. We will talk about, I will take it up in the next, uh, probably after another three or three, two or three days. Done, I will sir. point out where the problem lies in those uh, three uh, uh, laws that they are proposing to implement from 1st July. In here this also, case, here also, here also, don't you think the courts are being bypassed by the, those who have drafted and how Mr. Modi or Amit Shah, at least they should understand that they should get them translated into their own language, Gujarati or Hindi, before passing and all BJP members also. If I am wrong, you prove me wrong. The members of parliament, you are there to uphold the institution, democracy, the freedom, which has been guaranteed under our constitution. When uski hamari samvidhan ki aap log kya kar rahe hain कैसे हा हा मोड़ी वहा मोड़ी करेंगे और इंडियन अलायंस प्रतिपक्ष तो उसको कुछ पता ही नहीं क्या हो रहा ये दुर्भाग्य है देश का सर प्लीज हां नाउ इन दैट क्लिप दैट यू शोड जस्ट नाउ मिस्टर मोड़ी टॉक्स अबाउट 97% ऑफ एफिशिएंसी ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट लोकसभा या इंदिरा गांधी आल्सो सेड द सेम थिंग ड्यूरिंग इमरजेंसी द ट्रेन्स रन ऑन टाइम रियली राहुल गांधी टॉक्स अबाउट प्रोटेक्टिंग दूशन that the opposition is not being allowed to talk in the assembly. I want to ask him only two questions. Did the opposition talk responsibly with facts? Just shouting in the Lok Sabha is not uh, opposing. Did they ask the government any pointed questions? They didn't do that. And each time the government started to answer, they simply walked out. Walked out, yeah, that's what they did not rebut. They did not rebut any of the government's arguments. Yes. So what how is he planning to protect the constitution and the people by walking out of the uh, parliament? Last Every time the government years, starts to talk. Last two years we have been doing it point to point, uh, and Mr. PPT with PPT, Mr. Rahul Gandhi and India Alliance, you have not picked up any point DRTSPR channels. Once clearly stated by Ravi Shankar uh, Swaminathanji Ravi Chandran that DRTSP channels is playing the opposition role, whereas Congress led Rahul Gandhi they were running out of parliament when government was when government was questioned when government was answering it on the floor of the parliament. How is that opposition always walked away? Yes, sir. And even today, even on twenty six. When the government was saying that we'll bring in the telecom, why why didn't the opposition take it up? Why didn't the opposition oppose it? Why have they not talked about it? Till today, I have not seen any opposition leader talk about the telecom bill and its effects. I am worried. That's why I am worried. The majority community, why I am saying majority is whenever I am trying to uh, release a link 
they were questioning me about and they were favoring modi these ill effects of modi and amit shah government i call that supported by chandra babu naidu and you know what is happening to chandra babu naidu also in telangana high court and i will come to and then nitish kumar ji how bridges were falling apart those ill effects this opposition once it comes into power they are going to control you give it back to you in the same form of this amendment telecom bill and those three exactly. three new laws criminal laws they will hit back at the bjp and those supporters who have been voting them that means the entire majority committee or india bharat future is at stake because of the misunderstanding of mr modi amit shah without understanding the babus drafted bills the babus who are controlling babus you know the world mafia they are trying to pass day in and day out on the floor of the parliament without even discussing and opposition happily walking out waiting for their turn to come so that they are going to again impose those 1977 Mm, that is really bothering me it is shocking me yes sir <laughs> so now the point the entire point was when the constitution was being framed i am going back to the time when the constitution was being framed and there was discussion between the constitution uh, uh, framers yeah. that time the proposal for interception of mail was put forward and it was opposed by none other than already uh, krishna swami as well as ambedkar they didn't want oppose, uh, the mails to be uh, intercepted by the no power should be given to the government for interception of mails that is how the uh, framers of the constitution prepared the constitution the first amendment to the constitution was made by jawaharlal nehru and in that amendment the word public order was brought in public order public law and order and public uh, interest was brought in to curb freedom of speech and jawaharlal nehru did not want the courts to have a say on that see it was brought in by uh, sardar vallabhai patel and ambedkar and in fact it did not even go to parliament the first amendment was passed by the cabinet by these three people so the problem started there and it has continued now we have talked about right to privacy we have talked about right to privacy supreme court has said that it is a fundamental right coming under article 19 and 21 which means the fundamental right can be abridged only by the parliament or by uh, some parliamentary law now in this telecom bill if you are going to intercept my mail it is a violation of my privacy yeah and who is going to order that uh, interception or blocking or uh, detaining some faceless bureaucrat sitting in the ministry of home affairs who is not accountable to anybody and if he passes an order my mail can be tapped my telephone can be tapped whatever messages i sent can be intercepted it can be blocked it can be delayed it can be detained and what about the telecommunication networks that can be taken over by the government so if or the government decides that there is a national emergency there is some public uh, law and order problem incitement to some offense there is a threat to national security see all these are subjective words article uh, section 66a of the information technology act was thrown out by the government uh, supreme court precisely because of this reason that the meaning in the word is not clear they are all subjective not objective today when you say public order who is to decide what is public order if you say that public law and order is bad who is to say that public law and order is bad if you say that uh, in public interest who is to define the public interest is it going to be some bureaucrat sitting in the uh, north block or south block or is it going to be we the people the preamble says we the people have come together to give ourselves 
Now, what the government has done, what the state has done is, it is the state which is giving you all the fundamental rights and things. You are nobody. You are a beggar. We are giving you charity. Is this the constitution that is designed? And why is the opposition not talking about it? Because tomorrow when they come to power, they'll be able to exercise these powers. Is that the reason that they are keeping quiet? I oppose the emergency then. I am opposing the possible imposition of emergency today also. I opposed this uh, press uh, uh, bill when Rajiv Gandhi tried to bring it in under defamation laws. Today, what is the government done? By one single act, they have the press freedom and the press is acting like a frog. You remember that story? A frog is put in a pot of cold water. It is swimming round and round. Slowly the pot is getting heated. The frog does not realize that the temperature is going up. It still keeps going on swimming. And finally it is boiled alive. Today the press is like the frog in the cold water. And it is swimming round and round. Slowly the pot is getting boil, uh, heated up. And at some stage it will boil. Then what will the press then, there's, then they won't have a, even a voice to talk about. Because it will be said as a dissent and they can be closed on. In 1930s, Hitler also did the same thing. It was done in public interest. It was done to protect the people of Germany that he brought in certain laws. And using the same laws, he became a dictator. The German people lost every freedom that they had. Communist Russia also did the same thing during the time of Lenin and Stalin. Those who forget history tend to repeat it. That is the pity of the entire thing. We have gone through emergency. People have been talking about emergency. People have been talking about what has happened in emergency. But today, when the same draconian laws are coming back into the uh, constitution and becoming a law, nobody is objecting to it. I am surprised. Honestly, I am surprised. Over to you, Dr. Reddy. You are surprised, but I am shocked. I am shocked. Oh, what to say? The Best of the journalist minds who tout and themselves to be the independent and most efficient and intelligent. How is that they are missing these in between the lines of this draconian telecom bill? Is it missing the lines or messing up? Or you have seen. What about the lawyers? Of... What about the lawyers? Yeah, bar councils. Why are they keeping quiet? Bar councils. I, I, I really don't know why bar councils are keeping quiet. Lawyers are keeping quiet. It is already 27th today, 28th. Two days since it has been passed, it has, come in, it has become a law. Nothing happens in the entire country. No opposition leader comes out and speaks. The constitution means the people, we the people, now my straight appeal to all the India. We the people have submitted this constitution to ourselves. That means we are the constitution. Now when this being endangered by endangered by these draconian laws, one after the other by Modi governance, ably supported by Chandrabhav Naidu TDP and JDU Nitish Kumar and all that alliance, silently supported by India alliance opposition parties, should we keep quiet? Yes, I am blaming India Alliance opposition parties. How is that when the law was, it is becoming a law, how is that you don't have any idea? You have won the elections. People have elected you. You should have raised this issue on the floor of the parliament. Simply walking out as you have been doing 
allowing even election commission of india draconian bill that is the first thing prime minister opposition leader and cabinet minister electing an election commission of india then where is the free and fair election they have already walked out happily thinking that their term their chance will come but in doing so the people of india i am appealing to you whether it is nda or upa or the other alliances when they don't want to come to the rescue of the constitution that means the freedom the fundamental rights guaranteed under that so it is we the people who will be again caged we will be enslaved by these alliances don't you think it is right time for us to react and say we want we the people constitution no democracy we the people constitutional democracy not babus bureaucrats drafted democracy because these leaders they don't either understand english or their deeds which have been whether in the current or past being exploited or blackmailed by these babus who are framing these laws defeating the people participatory constitutional democracy now at least i remember now namo modi before manmohan singh he arrested his own people in the commonwealth scam suresh kalmadi he already got orders for arrest against 2g scam dmk alliance partners maybe if he had come in the third time he would have got these bureaucrats and corporates behind the bars maybe is that the reason why rahul gandhi did tear one order of a prime minister that time without even understanding why rahul gandhi is keeping quiet now even when rahul rahul gandhi and their family visit abroad intelligence bureau or they don't have any information where he is going how he is going and who is taking care of them and what modi is and amit shah is doing now also who is controlling them is it in the larger public interest jawarlal nehru ji your public order amendment is destroying dismantling democracy i only hope all those people who stand with us the flyer fraternity across india my appeal to all bar councils come out in large numbers if not today it will never happen and all those chief justices including supreme court and high courts and those retired and former justices if you don't raise your voice tomorrow your own people i mean your own relatives your own kith and kin have to survive in the same atmosphere dismantling of democracy by these draconian laws last word sir anything else uh only thing only when we have an responsible opposition this i have always been saying only when we have a responsible and educated opposition who are prepared to take the government on facts are you debate discuss it on the floor of the house instead of